So I'm going to tell you a little story about a bank I studied a couple of years ago, and it's a fun story. Be off. It's a story about how leadership and performance management can really change the behavior and well-being of employees. And there's good and there's bad and there's evil managers, and then there's just functional managers who have no empathy and doesn't understand their employees. So we're back in a bank. This is standard branch office. So the manager is basically a director. He's managing everything. Of course, he's part of a big banking chain, so he's not a CEO per se. He has to comply with all sorts of stuff, and the, all the systems are given to him by the corporation. But we have 13 employees, mixed age group. Age group. We have a manager and assistant manager, who are almost identical. That is often the way that we reproduce our management system. Manager thinks, "Damn, I'm king of the hill. I'm gonna choose an, uh, someone to succeed me." And since my skills are so great, I'm gonna choose someone who is exactly like me. So we reproduce the management style in, this, uh, in the system. So we get sort of monocultures. It's a selection environment. It's not always a good thing. It's very uh, often not a good thing. But it's a mixed age group, so you have young people and you have old people with children. And the way they decided to organize is that they have individual KPIs. You get measured, and if you deliver a number of sales and get some profit, then you get bonus. Nice. And you have flexibility. You can show up in the weekend. You can do these little things, and you can be there Monday morning early. You can be Monday late. And of course, there is these customers coming in. That was in the old days, a couple of years ago, where people actually came to the bank, not just wrote to the bank. So, so they would take calls and answer answer customer questions and, and speak to customers. And the focus was only on sales and output. You just have to deliver. You have to do a good job, and I'll measure you. And didn't talk about how you were feeling at work. But this type of, of performance management system that introduces a specific kind of behavior. And it favorizes a particular group of employees. The young people, they would go out partying Saturday night, come out hungover, and then turn up at work Sunday morning and just do a couple of these, uh, close a couple of cases. Nice. Every time you close a case, you get a point, and a point means bonus. Nice. And then I might as well sleep in Monday morning because we have flex time, so I could sleep in. But those who have kids, they don't have that option. They don't have the option to turn up Sunday morning and work in the weekends. So they would be turning up Monday morning. And since some of the staff is not there, then the load on this group is going to be extra high, just from answering calls. So they don't get to close any of these sales. They don't get to close cases. They don't get the points, and they don't get the bonus. So this system really drives a problem into the into the group. And if we look at the the measurements of performance, or or sort of how they feel at work, understanding, cooperation, engagement, leadership, and the assessment is just declining. And when you get below three points, then someone is calling head office, corporate headquarters, and they say, "Well, something's really wrong there. They don't know anything. We have to do something." And consultants are being hired, and they go into the bank and they change stuff. So they have a problem. We also measure it on a different scale. Management, when we measure it here, it's more about coordinating. That's good. Job satisfaction. This is a hundred-point scale, and if you are this much below job satisfaction, then you're you're very much below national average. That's a problem. When you have this level of stress, then you have sleeping problems, somatic stress, high blood pressure, all sorts of problems going to turn up. And you know that these people are going to change their job in a couple of years, and social support for manager very low. So we're beginning to see the problem here. So what they do is that this manager, who is old, an old dog, realizes something is wrong, and they realize that this this team combination of having a manager and a performance management system and an assistant manager who is identical and doesn't treat the group as as people, that's not working. So they decide to replace the assistant manager, send him off to somewhere else. He's really good at what he's doing, but they, we just don't need two of these kinds. And we engage or hire a new assistant manager. This is a people person, a cuddly bear. She knows something about making people feel good and organizing work. 
And they also choose how to reorganize. So you see the planning, control, organize, set the goals. And the work is reorganized as teamwork instead of individual work. Now we work in teams. No one turns up Sunday. If we have to work late, we're all going to be there and we're going to work together. Oh, that's the all the time part. And then they use games and humor. Simple thing, not bonuses. But if you do a good sale, then you can go up and punch a hole in a balloon and it says bang. And inside 20% of the balloon, there would be a lunch ticket. It's not about the money, it's about recognition, it's about, oh, I did something good and people can actually hear something, someone did something good. And it works. Two years later, we measure this, management. When you get to about 80 points on a 100 point scale, it's really hard to get any higher than this, then you get some sort of ceiling effects. So management is excellent. Of course, we ask as ma for managers in a general sense, that means it's both the cuddly bear and the hard manager, but it's become better. Job satisfaction, excellent. Stress, no stress at all. Social support for manager, excellent. And the good thing about this, this is at the same performance level as earlier. So it's actually possible to create a work environment that is conductive to high performance and, make, and really make it work well. If we compare it to the, to the internal measurements, then you have a declining, and here you have really good work environment. Same performance, good psychosocial, uh, psychosocial work environment. So it can be done, they don't use the simple bonus system anymore. And the analysis, if we look at that, what we see is that we have the good conceptual skills, we have good technical skills, that is what the manager could do. But we have very limited human skills in the beginning. And since we're dealing with basically a first-line manager, then the human skills is the essence here. That's what she has to be able to do. So that's why we hire a new manager in. And we reorganize and we make sure that the reward system matches. So if we look at the four functions of managers, the, go the goal is simply to become better. We need better well-being and performance and at least maintaining performance. We need to change the organization with a new manager and new reward system. So we reorganize from just having people working individually into three teams, fixed work, fixed group of clients, fixed teams, they can work together. We lead them by having a manager who is really, really good at the people skills, and then we control again. When we have poor work environment, we do something. But the loop starts here. We start by measuring that we actually have very bad uh, well-being at work and we have to do something about it. Then last thing we have to look at, competitive advantage. That is the essence. We as engineers have to make products, we have to make technologies that, that can sell. So that means we have four tools in the box when we're, when we're talking about competitive advantage. Innovation, come up with new ideas, come up with them fast and implement them. There's all sorts of systems where you can do that. Scrum, agile manufacturing, agile development, all these things, they work. And I mean, in Denmark, there is a tendency that, not a tendency, several studies have shown that we know our customers, we know the technologies, we are good engineers, but we are so slow at bringing new products to market. It takes ages and it's sort of, yeah, we're getting there. We just don't commit the resources. It seems that innovation is something that happens between lunch breaks and that's not good enough. We really have to focus on this and we have to pick up speed. The, the amount of new products coming out of Denmark is simply too low at the time, or have been for many years. Then we can have responsiveness to customers. Do we listen? What do they want? Make sure that they get what they want. And of course, quality. It has to be the right quality. What is quality? Is that an absolute or a relative? Who defines quality? Quality is related to satisfications. And it's related to? Satisfications mm -hmm. of, of, the, uh, of, of the customers. Exactly. But uh, when we look at the engineering task, that we see feasibility of our solution, that what satisfy our uh, uh, parameters of designs. So there is a gap between uh, customers and us yes. when we look at it. That's the main issue. We define quality as what the customers want. If we satisfy the customer's need, then we have high quality. 
regardless if I as an engineer think this is a shit product. If this is what the customer wants, then that's what he has to get. We just have to find the price point. It might not be the best technology, but it's always the customer that decides what is high quality for us. And of course, efficiency, we have to develop it and produce it at the right cost. So we're back to Nokia, and I really enjoyed that insight we got before, and in my time to this, because I just picked up this from 2007, um, the Apple iPhone, just on the market a couple of months before, and it's very different. So, so what happened to Nokia? And I think if we go into a bit about decision, making decisions, that might offer a peek into, and please, uh, if you have any more insights into this, please share. So Nokia, basically a large, super successful organization, and success means we know how to do stuff. So when someone comes along and says, well, look at this, it's a big screen, it's glass, it's, a, it's aluminum, they'll say, whatever. We know what's good for the customers. We've been selling this for years, and we're really good at it. So why should we see this? So Nokia was facing a big problem, just recognizing they had a problem. They were faced in a market they couldn't understand. All they saw was rapid decline in sales. And I mean, it was really rapid. It was just plummeting fast, fast, fast. So how should they react? They didn't even know how much time they had to react. Do we have one year? Do we have two years? Is this just a minor setback? One of those flukes that people say, well, we think glass screens are nice, so we probably develop something that looks like glass screen. They had incomplete information, ambiguous information. How, how should we deal with this? How should we interpret it? The time constraints were clear, but not the deadlines. I mean, they probably had one or two years to come up with something really good. And the basic was, as we discussed earlier, there was something about the software system that just wasn't good enough. And the cost and the time for developing a new software operating system and getting developers aboard would have taken years. You just don't develop that in a short span of time. So they were basically up to shit creek without a paddle. So they couldn't really recognize the need for a decision. And it's difficult to generate an alternative then. So. That's basically one of the reasons why Nokia failed. And I unfortunately don't have any time, more time to entertain because I like being here. So I'm going to leave the floor to Christina and thank you for answering questions and being energetic. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, I'm the last one in the line. My name is Christina. I'm in charge of the team, of course, together with Casper, Anna, and Julia, and 12 TAs. And basically now I will run through, now you've heard about the content of the course, what is the basic, and now I'll run you through how we've planned and organized this and how we're going to control the course during the coming 13 weeks. Um, yes. And Casper really gave a very good example of a case analysis. And that is what we do here in Timo. We study cases, try to understand them, and as engineers, we develop solutions for this particular challenge that we had, that we're presenting to you. So, you're part of the journey. Now we've entered into the sand pit. In a six weeks time, we have an exam, and I'll go for that in a minute. Yeah, so first I will tell you where can you meet us. As Julia said, this is blended learning, so you will meet us on various platforms. We don't have room for all students here at DTU. Uh, in Timo, so we um, provide you with different ways to meet us. So we have this place in Oticon, the Oticon Hall, and you will meet us in 306. You can also meet us in uh, 116 when we have the company challenge. We have the streaming. I know some of you out there are actually watching now, uh, and that you can do every week. Then in the afternoons, we have group work, which is in the building 450 where you can uh, enter into one of the classrooms there. And I'll be more specific in a minute. When you want to contact us, there's a Timo uh, email. So please write to us and then we will reply to you. Everything we do, you can watch on the YouTube channel. Um, we have the, our own channel. There's a link here. We have the Prezi there as well, the one that Julia showed you. And then we have the Twitter account, so everyone here who would like to ans answer or ask a question to us when um, 
If you're not present, you can use the Twitter account or the streaming channel to write us questions, and then uh, we will, of course, try to answer. Sorry. Um, regarding the YouTube channel, yeah. everything we do means the lecturer. So when we have the talk shows in the library, the part with the guests, those videos you can only find in the podcast uh, from DTU, because yeah. our guests do not like to be on YouTube uh, for obvious reasons. Yeah. So everything is, that is recorded is on the podcast channel, and then everything that the lecturer uh, do is on the YouTube as well, yeah. plus some additional videos. Yes. Um, yeah, and then the, we have the feedback from you, and I'll get back to that as well in a minute. Other platforms, CampusNet, everything that we provide in terms of notes, you can find there. That's where we communicate with all the messages that we have for you. So please have a look there. Um, especially the introduction to the course, you will find all the information that you need about the course in the introduction note. So have a look at that one. Yes. Then we have, uh, this, I said that we are streaming this. Um, you notice something on this uh, picture? It's taken last semester. This one. There's a student in front of us watching, or she's Googling for clothes, and now she's watching or looking for underwear. Just remember that when you sit here and you watch us, then the rest of you, the one behind you, can see what's on your screen. So uh, think of this. Um, yeah. We provide you with a lot of information to the course and various platforms, but we really, really want your feedback, especially the constructive feedback. Um, it's okay to be personal, but it can be difficult for us really to deal with it. Uh, so be constructive. If you want us to change, then tell us what you would like to see instead. So every afternoon you will be provided with this scheme from the TAs and the classes where you can provide all the feedback that you want to give. And the more the better, because then we can change until the coming week. So please use that actively. When Julia talked about that already, you can find it on CampusNet. We have 13 weeks. Within this, in six weeks we have the exam. So please note that. That is on the... Uh, 16th of March. 15th? Okay. Sorry. No. Yes. Uh, then um, you will work on the four cases during the first six weeks, also to prepare for the challenge that you're going to meet or you're going to be presented just after the, uh, the exam. So that will be, as uh, Julia said, the energy company or people coming from energy and from Grundfos. And the example that Casper just gave about Nokia, that is also what uh, Grundfos is going to talk about, that they are the best in the manufacturing pumps, but they're not at this moment aware of who their competitors are and where their new market should be. So uh, that is what they would like to get. They would like to get your help to find out what to do. So who are you going to meet? You are going to meet uh, the teachers. You're going to meet guests. Uh, from uh, both the four talk in, during the four talk shows and the challenges, and then we have our TA teams. I don't know if you're all here. Nope. But the, the manager of the TAs is Maid. She's here. So she will be in one of the classes um, and also be in 450 after lunch. Yes. And then there's you. you we can only do this if you're working actively together with us. So uh, we expect you to study and participate and ask questions and be active in your group work and, uh, of course, have ambitions um, either for high mark or at least for learning. So the one who learns is the one who does the work. So this is really what we try to hear is to give you different platforms to learn this new field. Then what? I'm not going to go through this, but have a look at the verbs, because basically that's what we assess you on when you get your final mark in the course. We test the first part, the first uh, learning objective during the uh, multiple choice exam, and then the rest of them will be tested in the uh, report, which counts for 70%. Yeah, so what do you need to study? At least the two books. That's, of course, the minimum requirement, and then, of course, the notes that we add, because we're going to use all of it. 
So, but the books we really um, encourage you to buy and read, and yes, you can use earlier versions. Yeah? So, it's one big mix of different, um, different uh, channels or uh, platforms to learn from, uh, and we're going to mix and match them during the semester. So, this is what we evaluate on, especially your ability to do case analysis. And we will talk more about that in a minute. So, as I said, we have two exams. The multiple choice test, which is a scratch-off test. How many of you are familiar with that? No? And then we have the report writing. How many of you are familiar with writing reports about seven, uh, 20 pages? Yes. Okay, so that you have tried. I guess the new thing here is to do the case analysis. So, but the scratch-off test, we won't do this exercise. Yeah. So, the scratch-off test is basically a test where you get instant feedback. So, do we have time to show the... Uh... We will show it again, yes. Basically, you get a sheet which has 25 uh, possible answers, or you have 25 questions, and you need to answer all them, and you have four options where you choose which of these you find that to be the correct one. If you choose the A and it's the right one, you will see a star. That means that you have five points. We will go through how it works in practice, but that means that when you leave the exam, you know your mark already. So, basically, you just need to learn the curriculum by heart, by six weeks, and then bring a pen or a coin so you can scratch off the fields. Yeah? Looks like this. Yes, so if you try to scratch, you know where you can win, you know, win money. This is basically the same thing that you do. Yeah? And then after that, you will meet the companies the following week, and they will present you to two different challenges. And we have the energy case, as I said, and the Grundfass. And that is the one that you will work with with your groups from a week. Uh, yeah, the deadline is wrong. It's supposed to be May 3rd. Yeah. So, really uh, running fast through this. So your job is to learn how to analyze a case whether it's a written case or whether it's presented by one of our guests. So, if you want to have a good mark, you balance the use of theory in combination with the data that you get from the challenge or the case. If you use too much theory and basically just repeat it, that will not bring you a high mark. And if you can only repeat the challenge and the case, that will not give you a high mark either. So you need to be sure to work with both parts. And you can read more about it in the, uh, in the note. Yeah. So, we considered a lot how to show you what this is about. So now we will try to give you an example and to show you what this is basically about. So if you read, maybe I should go on here. A uniform spherical bowling ball of mass of 7.25 kilos and a radius of 10.5 centimeter rolls without slipping on a floor that rises gradually. At a given position, the velocity of the ball is 5 meters per second. To what height above this position does the ball rise before coming momentarily to a stop? Assume negligible energy dissipation. I guess you're all familiar with uh, physics. Yeah? So, any um, suggestions for an answer? Yeah, that's one here. So, convert kinetic energy to potential energy. Basically, the answer is this. This is the height. But what is wrong with this? If basically, if you get a, a case and you just write the answer, then what is wrong? Yeah? No, you didn't explain how you got the answer. So, then this. So we still have the same case. And now we're right. We can use the energy conservation principle to equate, to equate the initial and final total energies. To do this, we must know the moment, moment of inertia of the ball and its angular velocity. And we have 
this equation. We also made the drawing. Is it good now? Is it okay now? Yeah? You need assumptions? Yeah? Still have the height. There's something here with the mic, isn't it? It's my earring. Ah, okay. So, no, it's not better now, right? What now? Is it better? Yes, it's better. Are we there yet? No, we're not there yet. We're only there when we both can present the case. So what is this problem about? What is it that we want to find out? Just a sec. Could you take this? Yeah, just hold. When we have the case, you can illustrate, make drawings. We really encourage you to make drawings in your case report. So illustrate what you found. What data do you have? So what do we know? What do we don't know? And what assumptions? There was one over here saying we need assumptions. What do we need to assume? How can we understand the case? You have formulas. We always work with that in physics. We also work with formulas, you can say, in Timo. That is your curri curriculum, all the models and the theories that we provide for you. And sometimes you need to compare them. It's not enough just to use the SWOT analysis, as Julia talked about before. You also need to add to it. You need to look into, okay, so if it's weaknesses and it's about motivation, what type of literature do I have about motivation? If it's something about how they work together in the team, so do I have theories and models for, t uh, for team development, etc. So I need to combine the different models and formulas, you can say, in order to get the right answer. So you write up, okay, we have these, we understand the problem this way, we apply, because the problem is related to this, we, are, we, we choose these models or theories to work with, combine them, describe it, and then create a transparent argument. And remember the units. So what are we talking about here? And then in the end, we have the result. So if you can relate to this type of example, then it's the same thing you do with a written case analysis. And that is what we are assessing you on in your report. Not just that you're able to give a good answer to the question, but also how you reached the answer. So, this is a guideline to how to work with case analysis. So, start skimming the case quickly, just to find out what is this about. Then thoroughly read it again, and try to see, okay, what do I have, what type of information do I have about the manager's skills, or the market situation, or a technology, or a new opportunity, or a competitor. So what do I have? What type of information do I have? And put that down. And review it carefully to see, OK, so do I have everything, or do I need to make some assumptions? Then you have to decide what are the issues. And as Julia and Casper has said, we don't provide you with one problem that you need to solve. You need to to identify potential problems, how they link, and then choose which one you're going to work with. If you don't do this, you don't know what to analyze. So you have to be clear on the type of problem and state that clearly in your work. Then you apply the theories that you've chosen and the models and start working your way through and describe along the way um, how you do this. And we want you to demonstrate that you know how and when to use the theories and models, because that is what we are assessing you on. That is now when we have just read 100 reports, that, what we, that is what we look for. Why did you choose these, uh, these models and theories, and how did you work with them, and what did the end result, or well, what was the end result? So, and support your diagnosis and opinions with reasons and evidence. Um, don't use words like we think or we believe. Develop an appropriate action plan and set recommendations. That's because we're engineers, we want changes. So support us or show us what, what can be done to the specific problem and then use references. The book or the note 
the web page, whatever you've taken the information from, and which model in theory. So we can see that in practice, and so we cre create a transparent argument. Yes. So, we want you to be, when we ask the question, why or how did you reach this conclusion, then we should be able to find the answer in the text. So please offer an analysis and evidence. We don't want your opinion. We want an argument. So, strike phrases like I feel, I believe, I think, or we think, we believe, and then use instead our anal analysis shows so we can see how you work through the case. Yeah? To create a transparent argument, as I said, we would also like you to use references. Whatever, you can use whatever style you want, but we need to see what you have worked with, what you have read, and what you used for your analysis. Yeah. So this is your jo job in the groups. Because you're now entering into, you can say, like a small organization in your group, there are things that you can do to make this work well. You're gonna, for some of you, you will be in groups that you already know, and for some of you, it will be people that you've never met. So in order to support that new work process and new organization, we suggest that you prepare. But we also would like you to prepare for the sessions that we have here, because we have guests, and the more questions that you can ask the guests, the more that you can learn. Because as you remember, the, more, the harder you work, the more you learn. And uh, that is the purpose here. So ask questions when we have them, because this is where you can try to test how much you've learned from the curriculum. Yeah. And then, of course, we will do the best that we can to give you as much inspiration and answer your questions the best that we can. Yeah. As I said, a core part of Timo is to work in groups, and you will do that every Wednesday afternoon from 1 to 5. So I'm not going to repeat myself, but basically this is what we do. This is where you apply just when you're in the lab or if you are modeling something together with co-students. Now you work together here to do exercises and case analysis. For the coming, this afternoon you will work with a mobile life case from Danske Bank. That was the challenge from last semester. And then the coming weeks you will work with these four cases that we worked with over the years in Temu, and you maybe, maybe you have heard of them. The milk fuss case, uh, which is a manufacturer, and then you have the soft performance, it's a software development company, then you have the continuous work, that's a food manufacturer, and then you have the human tech, which are changing their strategy from having a, what do you call it, an allo, uh, to digital strategy in, with their products. So why should you engage in it? this? I know a lot of you probably have already experience with group work and you find this is really to be tedious or something that you don't want to spend time on. And we also have emails from students say, do I really need to show up? Uh, yes, you do, because you, this is where you learn how to analyze the case and that is the foundation for your report that you're, gonna, uh, that you're going to work with. It also prepares you for the individual exam. You have a comment? I just wanted to say, this is where you develop your soft skills on top of preparing for the exam. So what you're doing in the group is that you are learning how to use the curriculum to pass Timo and get a good grade, hopefully. You're learning how to manage a group, so you're actually applying the theory on group management that are part of the curriculum. And you're learning how to solve cases in a group, which is what you, what you will do in the future when you are working. So it's the place where you're actually learning theory and practice at the same time. So that's why it's so important to show up and work and try to also apply the models that we teach you about group management. Yeah. So. But we also know, as I said, that it can be a challenge to be, an, as part, you know, be part of a group you have different ambitions, uh, you have um, different times of the day where you would like to work, um, what is high quality, what is low quality, what should be the content of the report, etc. Um, so, as Julia said, we will be, you will be a part of our, what, we, what you will experience for those of you who are in a new group 
is that you need to align expectations. So we really encourage you a lot to spend time on that in the beginning, and you will be supported to do this in the afternoon when you need to do a team contract. So, yes. The team contract is already uploaded, so you can work on that in the afternoon uh, when you form the groups. And what would you, we would like you to do is to consider, you can say, the rules of the game. So what would be a good uh, teamwork, what would be a good project uh, the coming semester or in this semester. So um, make your expectations explicit. Most students will say that they're aiming for a 12 when they start, but we know for a fact that when we've been in this course for a few weeks, then the ambitions, they drop. So try to be honest in the beginning, say, okay, what is it really that I would like to achieve? Um, yeah, so to take, um, to work with a contract is to invest in your end result and your team. These are some suggestions for, the, for things that you can consider. So, should you have regular meetings every Wednesday? Is it okay not to show up? Should you uh, set up some deadlines and milestones the coming weeks, especially when you start doing the report? Should there be a deadline for when you're done with the, the pitch that you're going to make, etc.? So, and what if you don't show up? Then, for how many times can you not show up in a group before you are thrown out? Um, is it okay to cancel a meeting? How will you deal with the lazy members? We hear about that every semester. Um, you know, I'm working a lot and he's not doing so much. And so try to work with this. Um, and we will encourage you, if you have conflicts, to work with them. We will not, normally, we don't split groups. So try to make the best out of it from the beginning. And who has what role in the group? Do you have a preference for a certain task? Make that clear. And, for example, who are you? Are you the shaper that sets the direction? Or are you the coordinator that has these social skills to make things work? A team worker? The investigator who can find everything everywhere? or the one that always comes up with, we could also do this, or do it differently. Do you, are you the evaluator or the completer that makes sure that you meet the deadline and then you're the one working Sunday evening very, very late, so you're sure that you're done um, before the deadline? The implementer or the specialist, so you're just dedicated to one specific area and the rest you don't really consider. So think about this, because these are classic team roles and uh, if you can make it work, you can actually end up with a very, very good group. So have a talk about that in the afternoon. Consider who are you, and then share your preferences uh, with the rest of the group. This is another exercise that you can use in the afternoon, why you should actually work actively with project work here at DTU. Two different types of contracts. The one that uh, we recommend is the one that's uploaded on CampusNet. So, having said all this, going through the... We started playing in the sandpit, and you've heard the first presentations about what is Timo about, and also, you can say, the, uh, the format. Then you have the first afternoon. You will go to uh, 450. We have the whole building there both the ground floor and the first floor, um, and we have six classes. We want uh, those who are at the uh, Industrial Engineering Management Program to go, in, not into this, but into the 005, right? This is where you are. Yeah. Yes, so engineering management students, they go to... Yeah, you're looking at me, Maid. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? It's because we, on the slide it says engineering students. So, yeah. engineering management yeah. students. The industrial engineering management students, that particular program, they go into the room of 005. 
And then, of course, if you are already in this very, very nice group that you would like to be in or stay in, where you have uh, co-students from other programs, that's okay with us. But for those of you who would like to be part of an industrial engineering management class, please go into the 005. The ones who has a group, they stay on the ground floor. Those of you who don't know anyone or I have a small group of two or three, four persons, you go upstairs into one of the open classrooms and then you will be, um, you will be added or you can say mixed with the other groups. So we will have groups of six in all classes. So those of you who already has a group of six people, you stay on the ground floor. Those of you who hasn't got any, or maybe a small group, you go upstairs. These will be your TAs, and you can find them in the different rooms. Yes. So this is what you do every Wednesday from 1 to 5. Today you will start, you can say, the forming phase, and experience in a few weeks probably the storming phase as a group. Um, it will be your fixed point the whole way through. You form the contract and we will follow up on it if you're entering or if you experience uh, difficulties or conflicts. So how can we support you in, in mending this? Um, and as I said before, a shared level of ambition is a good starting point. So really be very explicit about how you would like this uh, group work to work. Fill in the contract and sign it. So you actually make an official document this afternoon. And then, when you've done that, you've found your class, you're now in a group, you've sat down and you've worked together with a contract, then it's time to start having your first case analysis, where you have hopefully looked at the mobile life case, otherwise start reading it, skimming it, using the, uh, the guideline that I showed before, and apply the theory that you've already heard of this morning and what you read. Because I expect that you've all read for today what we proposed on CampusNet. So apply the theories and models. Um, if it's very difficult for you to open up the case, then start with the SWOT. Find the SWOT analysis in the book, start using that one, and apply what uh, Julia wrote here. So what is this? Is it a strength that they have that we need to build upon? Do they have internal weaknesses that we need to figure out? So are we on the top of it, where it's organization performance that is the issue? Or are we the, at the bottom, where it's about competitive advantage? So we need to look at the, the threats and the opportunities. So if you don't know anywhere else or any way else to open up a case, you can start by doing this. But read it, skim it, try to find out what, what information do you already have. Make drawings. Uh, state the data, etc. Yeah, so this is the journey. And um, why do we do all this? Because we want you to be the best engineers, not at Georgia Tech, but here at DTU. We want you to be able to create value, uh, both for the company that you're going to work with, but also for society in general. So. Um, we really, really uh, look forward to this semester and uh, work together with you and see what you learn and how you can contribute to the con concrete challenges that uh, some of our companies they have. Yeah. So, that's it for now. When you come to 450, found your class, you work through the day, we would like your feedback on this first day. So please uh, fill in the sheets that the TAs will provide you with. So, before, because now I can see everybody is moving around, is there something that I should have said that I didn't say? That you would have liked to hear about that we didn't tell you about? A technical question, we can take that afterward in the break. Uh, course related, yes? Could you have this one? Thank you. Yeah. Um, do we start at 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock in 4.50? You start at 1 o'clock. Super. Yes. As I said, 
All the information about the course you can find on CampusNet and especially in the introductory note. So you start at 1. Every Wednesday you start at 1 until 5. Other questions? There's one coming from Julia. We always have lecture between 9 and 12 in the morning and mm. then the group work between 1 and 5 in the afternoon. The talk shows that we're going to have starting next week are part of the lectures. So even if they are in the library and you might think it's just entertainment, because we have had this comment before, the talk shows are actually the way we show you how to connect theory with practice. So we really recommend that you attend the workshop as well as the theoretical lectures. Yeah. So next week it's A.T. Kani that will join us for the first talk show, which is, as Julia said, in the library. But for now, it's group work, group contract, and your first case analysis.